Hello, hello, and welcome to the Sport of Pro Wrestling Podcast. I am Chris Samsa, and this is your New Japan Pro Wrestling G1 Climax 30 Night 4 Preview for September 24th. New Japan Pro Wrestling's G1 Climax 30 continues with the second night from Hokkaido as the B-Block takes the ring on Thursday night. The card is headlined by IWGP heavyweight and intercontinental champion Tetsuya Naito facing off with Zack Sabre Jr. to remain undefeated in the tournament. The undercard will feature Evil and Yoshihashi in the semi-main event, each attempting to right their course in this year's G1 after losing their first match. The rest of the tournament card is filled out with Juice Robinson vs. Kenta for the first time identifying by those names, Hiroki Goto vs. Sonata, and the 21st career meeting of Hiroshi Tanahashi and Toriyano. Of course, you can find my complete statistical preview for every competitor in this year's G1 Climax at VoicesOfWrestling.com. I have interactive, sortable tables for NJPW's 2020, detailed results and statistics for all 1,475 G1 Climax matches to date, and this year's tournament at sportofprowrestling.com. And you can let me know what you find when you drill down that data by dropping me a line on Twitter at TheChrisSamsa. So this card is night two of two at the Hokkaido Prefectural Sports Center in uh, what I believe is Sapporo. Uh, the card will begin at 6.30 p.m. JST, just like last night's card. So that's uh, 4.30 a.m. Chicago time, uh, 2.30 a.m. West Coast, 5.30 a.m. East Coast. So, and of course, you can watch live or on demand on NJPW World. Um, of note, the first two G1 uh, cards are up in English on NJPW World. Kevin Kelly and Rocky Romero on the call. And of course, they did a, a really great job uh, calling the matches and, and making it seem like they were right there in front of it. We've got some B-block uh, results to go over here and the uh, standings before we get into this this card. So the results on night two of G1, so the first night of B-block action, were as follows. So Juice Robinson defeated Yoshihashi in 15 minutes and 57 seconds. Toriyano defeated Sonata in uh, 6 minutes and 16 seconds by countout. Kenta defeated Hiroki Goto in 17 minutes and 15 seconds. Zack Sabre Jr. defeated Evil in 14 minutes and 54 seconds. And Tetsuya Naito defeated Hiroshi Tanahashi in the main event in 27 minutes and 16 seconds. So that leaves us with five guys on top of the standings with two points and five guys at the bottom still looking for their first win, so zero points. Uh, The five at the top, Juice Robinson, Toriyano, Tetsuya Naito, Zack Sabre Jr., and Kenta. On the five at the bottom, Hiroshi Tanahashi, Hiroki Goto, Yoshihashi, Sonata, and Evil. The September 24th card features two matches of wrestlers with two points each, two matches of wrestlers with zero points each, and one match split between wrestlers with zero and two points. In the main event, IWGP heavyweight and intercontinental champion Tetsuya Naito will face off against one half of the IWGP heavyweight tag team champions, Zack Sabre Jr. Tetsuya Naito and ZSJ don't necessarily have a heated rivalry, but they are certainly familiar with each other. They have met four times in singles matches, first in G1 Climax 27, a Naito victory. The next year, in 2018, ZSJ played the role of spoiler to Naito twice, once in the New Japan Cup, bouncing Naito from the first round of a tournament that he'd eventually win. And then later in the year, ZSJ and Naito met again on the last night of B-Block action of G1 Climax 28, where Zack Sabre Jr. defeated Naito in 18 minutes and 17 seconds, eliminating Naito and landing them both at 12 points. And the best they could do was tie final match competitors, Kota Ibushi and Kenny Omega, who both held tiebreakers over Naito and Zack Sabre Jr. Naito was able to avenge his losses by defeating ZSJ at Power Struggle that year, but Sabre has proven he can step up and defeat Naito when it matters most. This year, with Naito competing in the G1 as the IWGP heavyweight and intercontinental champion for the first time, every match is high stakes, as a loss will almost certainly lead to a championship match regardless of how the tournament standings end up. So let's look at 2020. Both Naito and Zack Sabre Jr. enter this match with only one singles loss in NJPW this year. Naito in his Dominion title defense against Evil, and ZSJ in his first round New Japan Cup match against Kota Ibushi. All three of Tetsuya Naito's average time metrics, so that's overall, wins, and losses, are the highest in NJPW in 2020. His average match length, 32 minutes and 50 seconds. His average winning match length, 31 minutes and 47 seconds. And his average losing match length, albeit just the one match to Evil, 
was a New Japan high, 38 minutes and one second. Naito's ability to succeed in long matches doesn't necessarily bode well for him against ZSJ right now. Sabre's 27-04 victory over Will Ospreay earlier in this year, at New Beginning, is his longest singles victory on record. His longest before was his Rev Pro Heavyweight Championship title defense against Hiroshi Tanahashi last September in Beppu. So, Zack Sabre Jr. is figuring out how to win longer matches, and this is a relatively new development for him in the, in, in the way that matches over 22, 23 minutes are still within his wheelhouse. Whereas before, if, if matches went 20 or so, you kind of knew that Sabre was wearing down. Uh, Naito has never had a problem with long matches. Clearly, uh, his losing match length against Evil at 38.01 proves out that Naito still has the stamina to hang for long periods of time. If we take a look at these guys' uh, G1... Uh, if we take a look at these guys' G1 histories, um, they're not so dissimilar when you look at the win percentage. So Tetsuya Naito at a 598 and Zack Sabre Jr. at 571. Um, but these guys... Uh, but Tetsuya Naito has significantly more experience uh, with 55 wins, 36 losses, and one draw. And Zack Sabre Jr. landing himself only uh, 16 wins and 12 losses. Uh, Zack Sabre Jr. has indeed finished seven of his 16 G1 victories by getting his opponent to submit. That is tied with the highest in this year's field. That is tied for the highest in this year's field with Minoru Suzuki, with the highest winning, with the highest percentage of winning falls by submission at 43% in this year's field. Only two of Tetsuya Naito's 36 losses in the G1 have been by submission: one to Hiroyoshi Tenzan and one to Minoru Suzuki. We talked a little bit about their head-to-head in the uh, the introduction of this match, but Naito and Zack Sabre Jr. are tied at 2-2 two and two overall in their all-time series with a 1-1 one one G1 record. So this match will serve as a kind of a rubber match, and certainly both will come in kind of with a chip on their shoulder because um, Naito knows that Zack Sabre Jr. is uh, typically able to defeat him in big moments, and Zack Sabre Jr. Uh, lost his last match against Naito at Power Struggle in 2018. So I wouldn't call this uh, necessarily an upper echelon main event, but it's certainly nothing to ignore by any means either. Zack Sabre Jr., always a threat to play spoiler or honestly compete in the tournament, and uh, Tetsuya Naito, obviously the champion. So anytime he's on, you kind of have to pay attention to see where he's headed and how he's doing, because if he runs off a, it rattles off a series of losses, uh, we've got some title matches coming up in the, you know, between now and I guess Wrestle Kingdom. And if he rattles off a bunch of wins, then maybe he's got a shot at being that first IWGP heavyweight champion to win the G1 since 2000. The semi-main event of this card will feature Yoshihashi and Evil meeting in a rematch of this year's New Japan Cup quarterfinals, where Evil defeated Yoshihashi in the shortest NJPW singles match to date in 2020. That was a, uh, a two-minute bludgeoning that ended with a referee stoppage while Evil held Yoshihashi in uh, what I guess was a sharpshooter. So, you gotta imagine Yoshihashi's gonna enter this match with a chip on his shoulder, and Evil is looking to get back on the right side of the win column as he's lost two in a row. But it's certainly possible that Yoshihashi, believe it or not, is not the guy that Evil wants to see on the other side of the ring. Yoshihashi very technically leads the career series with Evil 3-2, to two, with two of his victories over Evil coming before Evil returned from excursion under the persona of Evil. Uh, Evil is the only wrestler in the B-block field who Yoshihashi has defeated, uh, he is 0-16 in his career against the rest of the field. If you count the uh, the pre-evil victories that Yoshihashi has here, he is 3-18 and against the field. So still, um, well, terrible. Yoshihashi is 4-3 and in singles matches in 2020, so not super awful. He, uh, he hasn't necessarily beaten anyone of note with his victories coming over a uh, young lion, Carl Fredericks, Mysterioso Jr., Hiroyoshi Tenzan, and Bushi. Recent two-match losing streak aside, Evil has had one of the strongest 2020s in NJPW. His seven victories, ten matches, and three hours and 47 minutes of total match length are all only second to Kazuchika Okada. He did rattle off a seven-match winning streak through the New Japan Cup and winning two um, IWGP Heavyweight Championship matches, but since, uh, since his loss to Naito and then a loss to Zack Sabre Jr. on opening night, 
he looks to get uh, back on the right side of the win column here too. In regards to the G1, Yoshihashi enters this match with an 8 and 20 record, uh, 286 win percentage. So uh, that's the worst in this year's G1 class. And Evil at 19 and 18 looks to stay above 500. The only thing I can say we should really be looking out for is whether or not Evil and Dick Togo can figure out how to uh, how to get a win here, uh, or whether or not Evil actually needs Dick Togo in a match against Yoshihashi. He certainly didn't need him in the in their last meeting in the New Japan Cup. So that's our semi-main event, and as we move down the card, we'll have Juice Robinson coming in at two points, facing off with Kenta, also entering with two points. If you do a quick search of Juice Robinson versus Kenta, you won't find a record of any matches between these two wrestlers. But if you know a little bit about the paths that their careers have taken, you'd know to also search CJ Parker versus Hideo Itami, and you'd find a five-match series throughout Florida Armories that Kenta dominated. Kenta and Juice Robinson crossed paths in WWE's developmental brand, NXT, like ships in the night throughout the end of 2014 and the beginning of 2015. Kenta, then known as Hideo Itami, clearly motivated by the beginning of his WWE career, defeated Juice Robinson, then known as CJ Parker, in less than five minutes in Robinson's last televised match with the brand. Times have changed as both wrestlers enter their match with each other in the second B-block card of this year's G1 on even footing, both with two points after clean victories over Yoshihashi and Hiroki Goto, respectively. The 2020 results of these two guys is kind of disparate, as Juice Robinson has had uh, limited activity, leaving him just 1-1 one one in singles matches after uh, that victory over Yoshihashi in his first match of the G1 Climax. Kenta continued his five-match winning streak with his victory over Hiroki Goto in his first G1 match of the year. Uh, Kenta's only losses over the course of the last 365 days came at the beginning of 2020. That loss to Hiroki Goto and a loss to Tetsuya Naito is Kenta challenged the IWGP Heavyweight and Intercontinental Championships. As I laid out in the match introduction here, Kenta and Juice Robinson have never faced each other in a singles match, but Hideo Itami, now Kenta, and CJ Parker, now Juice Robinson, have squared off five times, four of which took place in Florida Armories while they both wrestled under the NXT brand. Their one televised match was a four-minute and six-second Kenta victory on February 18th, 2015, And that was the last time Juice Robinson appeared on NXT television. So these guys have a little bit of history. Um, Surprised that we haven't seen any um, even wink, wink, nudge, nudge uh, promos regarding that. But maybe we will afterwards, Uh, especially if if Kenta comes out victorious. You got to imagine he's going to get a dig in here. So uh, these guys, maybe a little familiarity with each other. I anticipate that they will both come in looking to make a statement or have a statement another statement victory as uh, Kenta's victory over Goto definitely served as that for him but uh, Juice needs to defeat someone with some stature to really make himself a player in this year's tournament now as we move down the card I'm sure this is a match that um, everyone has circled on their on their G1 calendars, it's uh, the 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 longest standing rivalry in this year's tournament. It's the the match with the most history. It's definitely the match between two high standing G1 stalwarts. It's Hiroshi Tanahashi versus Toriyano. Given the disparity in stature and history between Hiroshi Tanahashi and Toriyano, it is a surprise that we enter this matchup with Yano at two points and Tanahashi at zero in their second G1 match of 2020. Newer watchers of NJPW may not recognize Tanahashi and Yano as a long-standing rivalry, but no singles match in this tournament has as much history, 20 matches, as Hiroshi Tanahashi and Toriyano. The rivalry began early in their career as they battled for the now defunct U30 Openweight Championship throughout 20, 2004 and 2005. Since then, Yano has mostly been a thorn in the side of Tanahashi, rarely victorious, but always a nuisance as they met in tournaments throughout the NJPW calendar across their first 12 years on the roster. It has been a while since these two squared off, over five years to be exact, with their last meeting happening dur- during the 2015 G1 tournament. Prior to that, these two had averaged almost two singles matches per year against each other. So Tanahashi leads the career series with Toriyano, 15-3-2. to 
Their series includes one time limit draw, their first G1 Climax match in 2005, and one double countout, their second G1 Climax match in 2007. Tanahashi also leads the the, uh, career G1 series, 4-1-2. Toriyano began his career series with Hiroshi Tanahashi on a 10-match winless streak before finally overcoming the ace at Wrestling Dontaku uh, 2010. Hiroshi Tanahashi's 15 victories over Toriyano represent a third of his 45 career victories over this one this year's B Block field. So, like I said, 20 times these guys have battled, but they haven't battled in the last five years. So it'll be uh, it'll be curious to see what Toriyano brings to the table and how here uh, you know this version, this era of Hiroshi Tanahashi, how he manages um, Toriyano. When we start to look at their G1 history, Hiroshi Tanahashi has averaged 12 points per tournament over the course of the last five G1s. Yano has averaged eight, uh, finishing with exactly eight points in three of the last five tournaments. Hiroshi Tanahashi continues to add to his record number of G1 Climax matches, this being his 143rd. Uh, and Toriyano, of course, holds the top spot for shortest average match length among competitors with 20-plus G1 matches, landing at 7 minutes and 56 seconds. It's likely that Yano is regretful of his 2005 30-minute draw with Tanahashi at this point, as it goes entirely against his ideals. Removing that match from Yano's history, Yano's over 100 match history, uh, drops an incredible 13 seconds from his G1 average match length. So I'd hate to call this match uh, with Toriyano a night off for Hiroshi Tanahashi, as he'll need to be really mentally prepared and mentally aware of where he's headed. Um, but after that physical war that he had with Tetsuya Naito the other night, it's uh, probably good for Tanahashi in the sense of his tournament layout to have a match like this where he can focus in a different way and use his body in a different way. Opening up the tournament card will be Hiroki Goto and Sonata, both entering with zero points. Perennial mid-tier G1 competitors Hiroki Goto and Sonata look to get on the board in their third G1 Climax match against each other in five years. Uh, The stature and attention given to some of Sonata's G1 victories and typical anonymity of Hiroki Goto's G1 performance would lead some to believe that Sonata is the more successful G1 wrestler as of late. Sonata has ended each of his four G1 tournaments at 4 and 5, landing with exactly 8 points in each each year. Goto has averaged 10 points per tournament over the last 5 years, finishing above the 500 mark 4 of the last 5 years. So Goto is definitely the more experienced G1 wrestler here uh, with 55 wins and 48 losses against Sonata's 16 and 21 now. Um, In their head-to-head history, Sonata and Goto have traded wins during their three-match series, including two in G1 competition. Most recently, Sonata bounced Goto from the 2019 New Japan Cup in the first round. So certainly Goto and, and Sonata, super motivated to get into the win column. This will definitely be a, a competitive match. Tough to call. If I was making odds, I would call it a push. Um, not really sure where we're going to land. Goto, with all that experience, certainly knows how to pull out some wins in the G1. And Sonata, uh, always a threat. Always a threat to put up a big win, especially in the G1 Climax Tournament. So that's all I have for you today. But of course, you'll be watching these these shows and these matches on NJPWWorld.com. And before I go, I got to give a shout out to NJPWEXT. NJPWEXT is the only browser extension for NJPWWorld.com with features like synchronized viewing parties, dark mode, improved translations and layouts, custom and shared playlists, and much, much more. It takes NJPW World to the next level. Visit NJPWEXT.us today for details. On a personal, less ad read style note, NJPWEXT is uh, linking back to my sportofprowrestling.com previews for all these cards um, on the uh, the show pages as well as on the, the G1 tournament page, which is super neat and uh, can be a good reminder for you to catch yourself up if you're clicking on those videos to watch those shows and you... You didn't, uh, you didn't check out some of the, the preview work. So I appreciate that from them, and it's a cool little partnership we've got. So that's all I've got for you today. We've previewed all five of the G1 Climax uh, B-Block matches on the September 24th card. I'll be back later this week to preview the Sunday the 27th A-Block card from Kobe World Hall featuring uh, the main event of Jay White and Kazuchika Okada. 
and a, uh, a Best of the Super Junior 26 final and Consensus 2019 Match of the Year rematch between Will Ospreay and Shingo Takagi. Now that's a card to mark on your calendar, and I will, I will certainly have some good stuff to talk about about that. Of course, you can find this preview in written form at VoicesOfWrestling.com. Give me a follow on Twitter at the Chris Samsa to interact with me during any of these G1 shows. I'm typically up watching. Uh, I appreciate you giving me a listen, and I will see you next time on the Sport of Pro Wrestling podcast.